Hey everybody, today is Friday and it is fun Friday. So we're gonna be doing some fun activities. First, I just wanna tell you that the reason I'm got my shades on, got my colorful sweater on, it is rainbow day today. All right, rainbow day. Now that's crazy since it's gonna be really cold outside, but it is rainbow day nonetheless. So we're gonna be doing some rainbow art later. But first I want to finish where I left off our book from yesterday because I kind of left you hanging on purpose. So in Origami Yoda, Darth Paper Strikes Back, we stopped and I'm gonna just start a little ways back. Um, Dwight is with Harvey on a team for their science class. And they're supposed to be collecting bugs as are the other students. And Sarah is telling this case file and they are trying to find bugs for their collection and their teacher lets them take a picture of it and then they upload them and they're trying to see how many they can get. Well, Dwight and Origami Yoda have declared that they are going to catch a hummingbird hawk moth. And if you watched the video yesterday, you saw what a hummingbird hawk moth really looks like. They kind of look like an actual hummingbird. So anyway, Harvey's always telling him he's not going to catch one. And he's telling all the kids, the ones that they catch, he tells them what they are before they even have a chance to look them up. So he's getting on everybody's nerves. But Dwight won't let Harvey touch the net either. So they're kind of both not doing what they should. So I'm just going to start right here where Dwight um, has the net and he catches something. So I'm going back just a little bit. When Dwight caught something, Harvey would paw at the net and then shout, a yellow swallowtail, I told you it wouldn't be a hummingbird hawk moth. We all got sick of hearing it. I mean, Harvey seemed to think that the only thing any of us cared about was whether Dwight caught a hummingbird hawk moth or not. By the end of the week, we did care. Amy and me and some of the others were trying to catch one too so that we could secretly give it to Dwight. But by Friday, woo woo Friday, no one had even seen one. In fact, I really wasn't even sure what they looked like. Then, with like 10 minutes to go, we were all running around trying to catch one and Dwight is just standing still, holding his net. Harvey had given up on taking turns with Dwight and was trying to catch bugs with his bare hands. All of a sudden, there's a bzzz and a whip with the net and Dwight's got something. He calmly walks over to Mrs. Porterfield. Now some kids didn't care, but Amy and me and a couple others were dying to find out if it was a hummingbird hawk moth. Whatever it was, it was huge and still buzzing. Mrs. Porterfield was having some trouble getting it out of the net into the camera thing. Then she does, and it sits in the bubble, completely still. And it's amazingly beautiful with shiny clear wings and this weird long coiled up nose and a big, fat, fuzzy body. What is it? asked Harvey, trying to look over my shoulder. It is a hummingbird hawk moth, Darth Smarty Pants, says Mrs. Porterfield. The next day, Mrs. Porterfield hung up a printout of the picture of the hummingbird hawk moth, and it's still hanging up there, and Harvey has finally shut up, at least in biology class. And here's a picture of the hummingbird hawk moth right there. Nice drawing by Kellen. Harvey's comment. That is totally not the way it really happened, but you're not interested in the truth anymore. Here's the truth. Anybody who got stuck with Dwight as a lab partner would end up complaining. My comment, Tommy. Dwight seems like a good partner to me. He caught a lot of bugs and you both ended up getting an A on your bug collection. I just wish it had been me sitting with Sarah. I barely got to see her this year. And then here is another nice drawing. He's turned, he's got a General Grievous finger puppet. Here's Origami Yoda and here's Darth Paper. And it says, Jedi scum, you should have let me try. And he's got a net in each one of his hands. So Dwight did catch a hummingbird hawk moth. And I'm sure that made Harvey really mad. So we will start next week with the next chapter, which is called Origami Yoda and the Non-Video Game, which is a really cool chapter. And you'll be learning something in that chapter about how to play a non-video game. Okay, so I also wanted to do our little um, factor crud to find my paper. Oh, here it is. Okay, so 
Our question yesterday was about men or boys. The average American male spends 4.3 hours per week grooming himself in front of a mirror. So we had to decide, do we really think guys spend that much time in front of the mirror? And the answer to that is yes. Yes, they do. It's a fact. So they uh, like to spend a lot of time in the mirror, just like girls do. So they spend more time probably than we know about. Who knows what they're doing? Maybe shaving their facial hair. Uh, maybe they're plick, plucking their eyebrows and we just don't know if they do that. Brushing their teeth, combing their hair, putting gel in it, all kinds of good stuff. All right, so on Monday, we're gonna be here Monday. Now the reason we're gonna be here Monday is because next week is Easter week and I'm gonna do a whole five days next week um, for Easter and we're gonna start a science experiment on Monday. So you definitely need to be here Monday so that we can start that science experiment. Okay, so now for the art lesson for the rainbow. So I'm gonna teach you a little something I saw somewhere. I've done this already in a black and white. So I'm gonna show you what the black and white looks like. So let me flip this. Oop. So there's what the black and white looks like. I thought it would be fun to make that into a color one, but you can do it in black and white. So I've got my paper here. So you want your paper. Let me turn this this way so you can see the paper. There's your paper. And you can use a black crayon, a black colored pencil, a black marker, um, a black ink pen. It just is easier if you use black, and I'll show you why in a minute. So you're just gonna do lines today. So we're just gonna take this and just do some type of wavy line to cut the paper in half, however you want it to be. Doesn't matter. And then you're gonna put a dot, and at that dot, you're gonna draw four lines, which makes three lines to color in. So it's one, and you have to start at the dot every time. One, two, three, four. So that was four lines, and you see I now have one, two, three spaces that I could color in. Okay, so I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna do another one. Maybe I'll do a big one this time. One, two, three, four. Okay, and see how they just make different lines. Um, maybe I'll make one connected to this line. One, two, three, oops and four, always starting at that point. Come over here, one, two, three, four. Now you can always do yours however you want. You can start where you want, you can um, make them any way you want. I'm just giving you some ideas here. So one, two, three, there's another four. So that's how you get started and you just keep going and you can make big ones, two, three, four. And then when I get a big one on there, I can connect it and make a smaller one. One, two, three, four. Do another one this direction. One, two, three, four. So that's how you make them. One, two, three, four. Okay, so you'll see these two, this is a good place to look. This little area here and this little area here, I don't have any lines in there. And that's okay because I'm gonna be coloring that in with the black later. And that can be your spaces that is void of color and this, the rest of these where you have your lines, these three lines, you can color those in. So you just keep going until you get your whole page as completed as you would like to, like this one. Now I colored in the voids with the black. So this is a black and white copy. So I'm gonna show you what a color copy looks like. So I use the colors of the rainbow and here it is get that out here and see it it's really pretty I like how it turned out um, I haven't done that before 
So I used red and orange and yellow, and then here's purple, there's green. Um, and so I left this part blank here so you could kind of see how I did this. You'll see that all these spaces are void of color and it kind of is what makes the colors pop off the page when you color them in. So we'll do this one over here so that you can see kind of how I was doing that on my page. So I'll just get me a blue marker here. Mm. So I'll turn it this way so I can kind of color it. So I'm just gonna color in the line, color it all the way in, and it doesn't have to be perfect because when you get the black on there, it kind of um, makes it smoother and straighter. But there's the blue, and then you can kind of see what colors are by it. I try to kind of alter my colors so there's no yellow on this side, so I'm gonna do a yellow on that side. So just color that one in. Like that. And then on this side, I think I'll do a purple. I like the purple, it's a pretty color. It's a pretty color for a rainbow, somewhere over the rainbow. Okay, here we go. All right, so you can see how that matches the rest of it now, like that. Now, here is our void space that didn't have any lines in it, and that is where I'm gonna take my black, and you, like I said, you could use a crayon, a colored pencil, a marker, whatever you have at home, and I'm just gonna color that in with the black, and that will make the colors pop more and it takes makes that void, that space, not have color in it. The white doesn't make it pop as much as this black does. And so I just color that in, like that. Okay, and then there is what it looks like when it's finished. That's really cool and it's really pretty. So you can go from this, keep drawing your lines, and you can see I just kept going and going all over my paper, and then you will get this. And it is a beautiful rainbow picture. So it's kind of abstract art, and you can enjoy that. So I hope you enjoyed that art lesson today, and I hope to see you back Monday. Like I said, we're gonna be doing a science experiment on Monday. We're gonna start that. We're gonna be doing some Easter things each day. So come back and join me next week, Monday through Friday. I love you, stay safe, and remember, kindness is a language everyone can hear.